Kevin. Sounds like somebody's time jumping and make some news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Julian Decades. All right, Man Crush, you got three points and control of the board heading into our first two-point round. Can you keep the shutout intact? Mm. Uh, let's go to... Yeah, let's go to news. Let's finish this one up with music. I think that only makes sense. Uh, no music in this round, but let's go to July 22nd in 1999. Uh, I think it was last week where we spoke about how movies get this, like, rolling release date especially like in the 70s well in 1999 this was still happening but unlike the 70s because there was like a theater shortage this was purely because the studios figured let's see how well this movie does give it a few screens and we'll see and then we'll give it more right so in this case this movie right here it was released to only 27 theaters the week prior to my week but it did something completely unheard of all right so this article right here is called which scares off rivals by Lewis Beale. And it starts like this says, who's afraid of the Blair Witch Project? Apparently Universal Studios and Warner Brothers is. Both studios announced yesterday that they are reshuffling their release schedules, at least in part to avoid going up against the mock horror documentary, which just got awarded another 850 screens on July 30th. Now keep in mind, I just said, they only got 27 screens that first week. Now they're getting 850 more in a week from that point. So Universal Studios comedy Mystery Men has been bumped back to August 6th and Warner Brothers has bumped ahead Deep Blue Sea from July 30th to July 28th to get a jump start on what they're calling a very competitive weekend. Here's the thing, made for less than $100,000, the Blair Witch Project, it opened last weekend to humongous numbers. Although it was only released in 27 theaters, it earned $1.5 million for an unheard of per screen average of $56,000 a screen. And that's why they gave them 850 screens after that. And then it got a second release, I believe in September. But the article continues, although Blair Witch was not supported by network TV advertising, which is amazing. That first week, there was no TV advertising for this movie. It was all publicized through their own website, which at this date of this article had 21 million hits. So they actually got more through that website than they could have got on television. Warner Brothers claims that the decision to move Deep Blue Sea was because of enthusiastic responses to a recent press junket. But Warner Brothers distribution president Dan Fellman told Variety that Blair Witch's huge opening weekend factored in the decision as well. And I quote him here as saying, we're expecting Blair Witch to do extremely well. All right, so when it was all said and done, Blair Witch made nearly $250 million. It was around $407 million in 2021 on a $100,000 budget. Those two movies that were bumped back and forward. Deep Blue Sea only made $164 million bucks on a $60 million budget. And Mystery Men completely flopped, only making $33 million on a $68 million budget. So... It's just completely insane how much money this made. This movie made, you know, the budget's hundred grand. They weren't on television to start this thing out. It was kind of like all word of mouth through the website and they just blew everybody out of the water. And then look at how many movies they tried to, uh, they try to copy it going forward. It's just, it's amazing what they did. Whether you like the movie or not, you just got to give it props. All right, Joe Finley, what did you bring for the news round? Well, I brought a first flight to the news round. Uh, it was on July 18th in the Arizona Republic. Uh, they reported on from the previous day, so the 17th, the first flight of the Northrop Grumman, the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit, better known to us as the Stealth Bomber. Uh, the bomber, which had a wingspan of 172 feet and cost over $500 million per plane, which is over a billion dollars today's money, uh, took a two-hour flight accompanied by two F-16s. Uh, the current de or the defense secretary at the time, Dick Cheney, praised the successful flight and called it a justification of the Defense Department's $22.4 billion investment in that program. Uh, it was piloted by Air Force Colonel Richard Couch and Chief Test Pilot Bruce Hines. Couch was actually quoted as saying uh, in their press conference, if we appear a little giggly about all this, it's because it was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot still had to happen before it became 
a uh, plane of choice for the U.S. military as the uh, the uh, Senate Armed Services Committee needed to see more tests, and some people wanted it scrapped altogether just because of the amount of money that was spent on it already. Uh, but the cool thing about this plane, due to its building materials, unique shape, and the method of construction, it makes it so radar had a hard time picking it up, if it could pick it up at all, which is kind of the, the stealth part of the stealth bomber. So a gigantic plane takes to the skies, probably got a lot of uh, UFO sightings, uh, from that one, but uh, July 18th, well, July 17th, the first flight of the Stealth Bomber. All right, guys, so for my news entry this week, we're going to go to the front page of the Lexington Herald Leader out of Lexington, Kentucky, July 20th, 1979, where the headline reads, Miss Universe Stage Collapses. Hysterical screams shattered the climax of the Miss Universe contest today when part of the stage collapsed and pitched eight beauty queens down a six-foot hole. Moments <laughs> after Marisa Salazaro of Venezuela took the coveted crown, the first woman ever from Venezuela to do so. The 18-year-old winner was unhurt, but Miss Malta and Miss Turkey, they were taken to the hospital. Miss Turkey was hospitalized with a concussion, and Miss Malta, she was badly bruised. Officials at the Perth Entertainment Center blamed the collapse on the sudden surge of reporters and photographers onto the stage as she took the crown. The back of the stage was designed to hold 75 girls. It was not designed to, sold, to hold 200 people pushing and shoving, one official said. The third and fourth place finishers, Miss Britain and Miss Brazil, were among those who fell into the hole that opened in the, in the wooden stage. There was a rumble and at one end of the platform, it dropped about six feet, said David Tanner, a photographer from the Perth Daily News. Miss Brazil, her $300 silk chiffon dress, it was torn badly. Oh, Some no. Other contestants, they wept hysterically. Others even trembled with shock. So oh. I give you mishaps at the Miss Universe pageant and some lovely ladies that are just drop dead gorgeous. <laughs> When you go back to the 70s, I feel like two months ago, you brought another <laughs> award show where the stage collapsed. Yes. Do you, do you like search for that in the news no, article? No, that's total coincidence. But yeah, that's <laughs> like two stage collapse stories in, in as many months, man. Sounds like somebody's time jumping and make some news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that's an interesting news round. Let's turn it over to our judges for this episode for their verdicts. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> uh, Mark. Oh, shit. Y'all see? Am I still here? Yeah, you're yeah, there. Yeah, we got you, Alex. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, Mark. I mean, Mark James. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, that's really all there is to that round. You, <laughs> you like uh, like chicks falling in holes. <laughs> well, hey, you know, uh, it. Uh, I'm back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Christian, do you have any thoughts on this round? Yeah, I'm going to say as a Maryland native, uh, i got to go with Blair Witch. I saw it in theaters when it came out, and the hype of it was was that it was, like, real. Like, the shit really happened. And so that's why everybody went to go see it, because that's how they were hyping. And, uh, you know, so it was, like, a different – different experience in that genre of film because you know going in thinking it's real and like watching it and like the way it ended everybody just walked out there like holy shit and then yeah. we were all pissed later when we found out that was all staged but you know I got how give stupid were were all of us though that went to see it thinking it was real so when they were like they were like snopes <laughs> or anything like that back then but we could <laughs> So no Facebook flagging, you know, yeah. fake news. <laughs> That's true, man. <laughs> it's like in the 80s for us with Faces of Death. And yeah. we always oh, thought Faces yeah. of Death was real. I was about to say, speaking of stage collapses, there is a Faces of Death film that ends with the friggin' stage yes. collapse. <laughs> yeah. yes, Ties it is. all together. Yeah. Nice. Uh, all right. So. Gentlemen, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, Beyonce had the most, uh, the best music video of all time. And uh, <laughs> uh, and I I must uh, respectfully uh, 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 tune 
out now because I have to go warm up for this rehearsal. All right. Well, yeah. Alex, dude, thanks for coming, bro. Gentlemen, thanks for having me. Uh, right. And this was a lot of fun. And I hope to uh, uh, play this again someday. <laughs> yes. And we're, we're definitely going to get you on the road while you do this. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. that'll, yeah. That'll be the thing. <laughs> But Alex, you know what? In honor of you and taking off, I'm gonna I'll concede to uh, to Mark in this round. Ooh, ooh! I'll ooh, give him right. the chick God. six chicks falling in a hole for Alex. What? what a, hey, Le what legit a the nicest these two have ever been to each other. <laughs> oh, that's, hey, look, man, crush, you got class. All right. I still oh, not really, but I try. I, all right. Well, that's all very right, nice of you. Alex. <laughs> good, good, good luck, good luck, gentlemen. <laughs>